Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the German Premium Tier 8 Heavy Tank, the E75 TS. Now this tank is fairly new, not really new. It's the unskinned version of the Roger Dodger, which is a tank that pretty much most people picked up in the Hot Wheels Season Pass. Because I believe this was the tank that you got for free. And it's finally, finally been released in its unskinned version. Now... As a tank in its unskinned version, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's a great looking tank. But as a tank, it's not that great. Unlike the Bone Shaker or the TS5, the unskinned TS5, I thought the TS5 is a fantastic TD. Right? This tank, as a heavy tank, is not that good. And if you have preconceptions of it from PC, it got nerfed extremely heavily from PC. Like they, mer they nerfed the accuracy, the aim time, the DPM the track traverse I think as well they nerfed a lot about it and it's just not that good quite frankly it's a case of they took it too far yet again with a tank and nerfed it to the ground so in terms of the crew skills that I run on this tank you'll see it in the top right corner of your screen I run born leader rapid loading trap mechanic sixth sense situational awareness steady aim snapshot run and gun and the pain to not pain tolerance armor angling skill now i run those skills because obviously i want to make my dpm better because this reload is just pretty not that good generally i want to obviously get my tracks back up if i get shot it needs all the help it can get with this gun because even in 6.0 meta it's still an annoying annoying gun and it misses a lot of shots even for me even in the like i say even in 6.0 it still misses a lot it's just an, a frustrating gun and add to that, the, the only real thing that I like about the tank is the fact that it's it's quick, right? It's quick, and that is good. Now, you could, I mean, you could run speed equipment to make it quicker and get it probably above 50 kilometers an hour quite easily. But at the same time, because this gun is just poor and the reload's not that great, you really need the rammer and the vert stabs on this tank. Optics as well, because obviously you want to boost the view range of, of this tank as high as you humanly can. Because view range is king in this game, and having the best view range is the best thing you can ever have. Because you never want to be outspotted. Now, I would have done a normal tank review for this tank, but I thought, you know what? Let's just do a mini... Uh, so I'm going to call this a mini review for it. Because I don't really like the tank. And generally, as well, the, a lot of the stuff I said probably in the other tank review which is, there'll be a card somewhere on this video to take you to the tank review for the roger dodger if you want to go through the in-depth stats go to that video because that ha none of the stats have changed it's exactly the same it just doesn't look ugly like the roger dodger so i thought i'd go through the uh, sort of a mini review show you the equipment and the crew skills in this pre six in this post 6.0 world that we live in and go through all of that and then show you the gameplay for the tank like we are now and yeah <sighs> Generally, it's, I, I'm not a fan of this tank. And that's another thing about it is that its armour just doesn't hold up at times. You see we get penned there straight through the front of the turret by the Type 61. The armour is a pain in the back, right? Because hull down, this tank is actually pretty, is, is okay. Right? I, I'm not going to lie. Hull down, it's okay. You did see us get penned there, but that's because they can pen the little viewport on the top of the tank. And there's also little spots on the gun mantlet that randomly get penned as well. You I don't think it's the same, it, well it's not the same as the Panzer 7 and the VK7201K in terms of the gun mantler weak spots, but it tends to get penned like those two tanks through the gun mantler, you know what I mean, where it's just random spots where it just gets penned. It's pretty annoying. One thing that is terrible about this tank is the upper plate and the lower plate. The upper plate and the lower plate effectively are fairly similar when they're angled and when they're not. You know, they're around that 200 and 210 mark for both. And at tier 8, there's way too many tanks at tier 8, especially post 6.0 with the pen RNG, where you get plus 25% at pen RNG and minus 10 lower. Just means that every tank has more pen, and a lot of tanks at tier 8, not most, a lot of tanks at tier 8 will absolutely destroy the upper plate and the lower plate, and then you face tier 9s and 10s quite often, and they just completely wreck it in terms of its armour. And because your reload isn't that good, 
and your accuracy isn't brilliant. I mean, I get the accuracy with the setup we've got down to 0.27. That doesn't include the vert stabs because the vert stabs don't get counted in the effective values. But that'll be an extra 20% more accurate, which is it's really accurate to be fair. But it just loves a miss and it can be very frustrating in that way. It's got 2.7 second aim time as well, which doesn't help it when you are stuck in a situation where you need to get the gun aimed in. You do feel it's quite long and you sit there for quite a while waiting to be aimed in. And it can be a bit annoying like that. But yeah, a lot of tanks do wreck this thing's armour and it can be quite annoying in that way. And if you can't even side scrape in it, right? Because it's got good side armour for any tank really. I think it's like 80mm thick or something like that on the side. Which means you're not going to get overmatched ever. But the turret ring sticks out. Because of how fat and round this turret is, it sticks out. Which means if you're trying to side scrape, there's like little bits that poke out and get penned that easily. It, again, it's just the armor profile on this tank is so frustrating for a heavy tank. Add to that, it just doesn't seem to work and the gun handling's a bit annoying. Yeah, it can be very frustrating. So yeah, I generally don't like this tank and I, I couldn't ever recommend it. There's too many other tanks out there that are German and heavy tanks that are probably better than this tank. To be honest, I think the Lerva is better than this tank because the armor works better. The gun is beautiful. The only thing it doesn't have is the DPM. And that tank, this tank doesn't get it either. And it's slow, obviously, the Lerva. But the Lerva is a fairly solid one. It's also a good money maker. So, the, um, there's, you know, there's too many other tanks that are better than this tank generally. For me, personally, anyway. But anyway, yeah, this game on Fred Vang has been a sort of one that we've had to travel a lot to get damage we're up to two and a half k damage we've got 1643 assistance we weren't top tier but it was tier nine so it wasn't the worst it could be and we've managed to make use of the mobility on this tank because obviously like i said that is the one good thing about this tank in the fact that it is mobile so you get a map like fred vang where it's a big map we're not struggling like a lot of other tanks like poor tortoise probably drove for a minute before he got to the fight out of his spawn to that position and this map is just far too big for something like the tortoise the poor old tortoise and he never had a chance and luckily we managed to shut him down and we're up to 3k damage with 1643 assistance and we're going on the hunt for the artillery we knew where the artillery was the RT was hidden up at a7 he took a punt at us earlier on and hit us and then he missed us the second time round and luckily we've loaded HE for him. Hopefully we're going to get to shut him down. And we do pen him with HE for 400. Which is a nice thing with this tank with 440 on its HE. That's pretty decent. The, the alpha damage at 360 is not too bad either. But the reload's just not great. And we finished that game with 6 kills. 3.4k damage. Ace tanker. Sniper. Top gun. 1778 base XP. With 1643 assistance. So that was 5k combined, which isn't bad for any tier 8 tank at all. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a fan of the tank. I'm, you can tell I'm, I just don't, I don't like it. But uh, that's where it is. Sometimes you find tanks that you really don't like and sometimes you find tanks that you really do like. The reason I want to show this tank at its best is because, you know, there might be people out here that look at it and go, the tank looks amazing, which it does. It's a great looking tank. I mean, it's basically a Lerva turret or a Panzer VII turret. On an E75 chassis with some side skirts, which is is a great looking tank. It's just a shame that the armor doesn't ever really work. <laughs> so we're on to the second game. And we are on Arctic region. And we're going to go up north to around C2. And we're going to try and play a little bit more hull down. But if we get to C2 and we don't get immediately spotted when we hit that point... You know what, we're going to charge to go to B45 and get hull down there. Now you see in here with the mobility of the tank, which is fantastic. You know, we can go at 45 kilometers an hour top speed and we don't really have any problems hitting it. We are keeping up with the Concept 1B. And the Concept 1B is a fantastically mobile heavy tank. I actually really like the Concept 1B. That's a fantastic tier 9 heavy. The only bad side to that one is the fact that it's got a terrible reload. But, you know, the, the mobility and the armour make up for that terrible reload, making it okay. Now, we end up hitting that CS-59 on the move, which you shouldn't expect to hit shots. Well, I say you shouldn't expect to hit shots on the move, right? But we're going to pen that one. Yeah. You shouldn't expect to always hit shots on the move. I mean, it is a post-6.0 world where you hit most shots anyway. But 
it's not one that is the best at firing on the move. There's a lot of tanks that will hit most shots you aim on the move and hit and pen them very easily because they're just that accurate. But obviously this one, and that's because most of those will get below like 2.25 accuracy easily, whereas this is obviously 0.27 while fully set up. So we're pushing this corner because they haven't really pushed it at all. We've got this T-77 that's hiding behind the hill. And I'm thinking, do I want to charge it? Yeah, no, screw it, let's go. We're going to chance it. It might hit us once, it might hit us twice. But we can't sit where we were because obviously artillery is just going to pepper us and it's not going to be a fun time. So we do side scrape out. Luckily enough, he hits our tracks. And he's blown his load, so we are safe to move up. Because obviously, I mean, this tank can't size great. Because of the side spots on the turret. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to, right? Because just because it will catch shots in those positions, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to at least bait shots into the side. Because like he did, he shot and he ended up hitting really low and only doing track damage. And that's a way, obviously, as a heavy, you can leverage people into taking the shots, like autoloaders, taking the shots that they shouldn't and therefore giving you chances to go forward and take your own shot. Just because the tank sh can't really do it that well doesn't mean you shouldn't try to at least do it in certain situations. And right there, we had to make sure that that T-77 was going to fire so we could at least get out and, you know, be able to progress and move forward. So we're going to try and just keep ourselves covered here with this dead wreck of the T-77. And luckily enough, I don't, I don't know why I took that shot, luckily enough the SU-130PM ends up hitting his dead wreck, which is always why you want to be using cover to your best of your ability and not just sitting out in front of people. Because if you can use the wreck of people, then obviously you can possibly bait a shot into the dead wrecks and you won't take the hit yourself and you can get a shot into them. Now our Concept 1B ends up taking a hit from the SU-130PM but finishing them off, which is nice. We're going to drive up to get some shots into this UDES 14 Alt 5. And we're just waiting on the reload. Hopefully we're going to get the finish in. This Concept 1B just misses him. And we do track damage. We nailed them, apparently. We nailed them. Did we nail them? I, I didn't see any hit, hit points disappear. Funny one there, Commander. Unfortunately, we didn't sh shut that guy down. But the Concept 1B does manage to finish him off. Now there's a Trailblazer just in behind. And we're just looking for the shot into him as he comes above the ridge line we get one straight into his upper plate he's going around our concept 1b at the minute which means he's unfortunately dumping all of his damage into him and he goes back below the ridge line so now i know he's blown his load but i'm gonna back up to try and get myself into another position to get a shot into him now i was hiding behind that well keeping my ass tucked in behind that tank again so that in case he did focus at me he wasn't gonna be able to get any shots and pen me but he never actually ends up focusing at me. We get another shot into him and the Concept 1B finishes him off. Now there's only five tanks left. There's the tank that was, I think there was a tank up here, which we're going to go get. It's T-44 who just never bothered to come and attack us, ever. He let all his friends die and just stayed in that one position, which happens very often. But we're just going to go and give him a little love tap. Now, that is something I did forget to mention about the E-75 TS. And something that could be memes if you were to up its speed with the speed equipment and just go for meme builds instead of trying to play this thing at least competitively. And that is the fact that with 45 kilometers an hour, you are like something like an 80, 90 or 100 ton tank. And I, I know that this tank is very, very heavy, which means you can get some incredibly good rams off at people. And you can do some serious damage with them. I mean, that T-44... We hit him at like 30 kilometers an hour up a hill and did about 200 damage. It's, it can be really effective. Now we've loaded APCR here to go through the T well, 257 very easily. Because we only have 227 pen on our standard AP rounds. And we've got 282 pen on our premium APCR, right? And that means that the AP was likely to bounce on that 257 or there was a big chances of bouncing on him the APCR not so much so we managed to go through that guy quite easily and he got shut down and we couldn't get to the other two mediums but we finished that game with a nice total we finished one kill 4.7k damage 385 assistance 5k combined again ace tanker high caliber confederate and yeah 5k combined in a tank that I'm not a fan of I, I couldn't recommend it but I wanted to show it at its best 
So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!